the US Air Force has constantly been at the forefront of aircraft technological revolution. From breaking the speed barrier in the experimental Bell X-1 to creating the first operational variable swept-wing fighter aircraft, the General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark, the US Air Force has racked up a lot of firsts in the world of military aviation. The branch comprises over 5,000 fixed-wing military aircraft and has the largest fighter fleet of over 1,800 aircraft, the largest in the world. It currently operates four fighter types, which are the F-16 Fighting Falcon, the F-15 Eagle, the F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. The first two fighter types being the fourth and four-plus generation multi-role fighters and the last two being fifth generation stealth fighters. The F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter are hands down the most technologically advanced aircraft in the US Air Force and maybe in the entire world. They have capabilities that far exceed the fourth generation fighters that are fielded by most of the adversaries of the United States. In this video, we'll take a look at why it's wise not to mess with these fifth generation fighters and whether there are any aircraft in development that can challenge the superiority of these two behemoths of the skies. Both these fighters are developed by Lockheed Martin's famous Skunk Works team, the same guys that produced iconic aircraft such as the SR-71 Blackbird, the U-2 spy plane and the F-117 Nighthawk, which was the first ever stealth aircraft in the world. While both aircraft and multi-role fighters, the F-22 was primarily designed as an air superiority fighter, whereas the F-35 was designed to be produced in different variants to serve the various needs of the different branches within the US military and its allies. The F-22 Raptor is comparable to a thoroughbred stallion. Its role is to enter airspace above the battlefield and establish complete air superiority in quick order. It does that mainly using its all-aspect stealth capability and various other technological advancements, allowing it to outclass enemy aircraft. The Raptor's airframe is designed to make the aircraft extremely stealthy, such that its radar cross-section, or the reading on enemy ground radars, would be 0.0001 meters squared, which is the same size as a bumblebee. It achieves that by clever design, reflecting most of the radar waves in opposite directions to the incoming wave and revolutionary radar absorbent coating on its outset surface. The Raptor maintains its stealth even while carrying a full payload of bombs and rockets as it stores all these ammunition in its internal bomb bays, which only open when the rockets are fired. The fighter comes with an impressive array of avionics and electronics, enhancing the pilot's situational awareness and reducing workload. At the core of the system is the AN-ALR-94 Electronic Warfare System, or EWS, and the AN-APG-77 Active Electronically Scanned Array, or AESA radar. Both these systems work together to allow the Raptor to go more or less unnoticed by the enemy's radar systems, both on the ground and in the air. The AN-APG-77 radar has a low observable active aperture electronically scanned array that can track multiple targets under any weather conditions and has an estimated range of 150 miles. One of the main ways aircraft get detected is through their onboard radar systems as they can scan the skies for targets. The Raptor avoids this by using its two systems in tandem. The AN-ALR-94 EWS suite can overload enemy sensors by focused radar beams and the AN-APG-77 system switches frequencies more than 1,000 times per second to lower interception probability when in active use. This makes the F-22 Raptor almost invisible. Imagine you're in a situation where the F-22 is targeting you from miles away and the sensors in your cockpit have no clue of this attack until you actually see a rocket exhaust plume speeding towards you from nowhere. It's truly frightening for enemy pilots to be in a situation like that. But what about visual range dogfighting? Although the F-22 Raptor is designed to get inside enemy airspace, get a fix on a target aircraft and fire its missile from beyond visual range before the other guy even had a chance to realize, the aircraft is also an extremely maneuverable dogfighter. The airframe and flight control systems of the Raptor are designed to be inherently unstable. Thus, no pilot can fly it without the help of its three fly-by-wire computer systems. This makes the aircraft extremely maneuverable, giving it an edge in a dogfighting scenario. 
Even its two Pratt & Whitney F-11-9 PW-100 engines can independently vector their thrust. This capability is known as thrust vectoring, and it allows the F-22 to carry out extreme maneuvers that would be unimaginable for a conventional fighter. The aircraft has a thrust to weight ratio of over one to one, which means the engine can produce more thrust than the total weight of the aircraft. This also allows the Raptor to supercruise, meaning it can fly at supersonic speeds without the use of its afterburners. Thereby, in a sticky situation, it can use its fly-by-wire system to control not only its flight control surfaces, but also its engines to maneuver out of harm's way or simply disengage and speed away. All these computerized systems make the F-22 one of the easiest fighter jets to fly. In fact, F-22 pilots often joke that a Cessna 152, which is a typical single-engine propeller-powered airplane used for most beginner pilot training, is harder to fly and control than the Raptor. These advancements are intentional, as one of the major improvements of a fifth-generation fighter is to take the actual flying of the aircraft out of the pilot's hands so that he or she can focus on the battle evolving around them, thus not only reducing their cockpit workload, but also making them efficient fighting pilots. Similarly, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter also incorporates a lot of features from the F-22. These two aircraft can carry out a lot of the same missions as well, but the F-35 was ordered into production to fill in the gaps that the F-22 can't fill. The bulk of what makes the F-22 and the F-35 different is cost, ability to produce different variants and operational capabilities. The F-22 is single-handedly the most expensive fighter jet in the world, coming in at a unit cost of around $150 million as per 2009 figures. It's because of this that US Air Force had to stop the production of the F-22 Raptors and only 200 jets are operational now. In comparison, the unit cost of the F-35As, the model to be used by the Air Force, is almost half that at $79 million. Thus, it's a no-brainer that over 2,500 F-35s are expected to be produced, with production lines running till the late 2030s. It will eventually become the backbone of not only the US Air Force, but also a lot of other NATO allied air forces as well. Capability-wise, the F-35 is slower and less maneuverable than the F-22, but by no means does that manifest as a disadvantage for the fighter. The aircraft is still equipped with similar avionics and electronics warfare suites as the F-22, providing the pilot with a 360-degree situational awareness. However, the role of the F-35 is not just air-to-air -air combat, but it's also expected to perform ground strike and close air support, or CAS, missions. Thus, the speed disadvantage and the slight lack of maneuverability actually make the F-35 a much more stable platform for such missions. This role difference between the two aircraft has also informed the design of the F-35 weapons bay, which is bigger and less stealthy compared to the F-22. This allows the aircraft to carry much bigger and heavier ground attack bombs. In fact, the F-35 can carry twice the weight of bombs than the F-22. 